Good morning, everybody. I, uh, I want to first uh, thank you for being here as we come together as a community to remember, to remember what happened to our nation 22 years ago this day. At this time, I would ask that we all proudly stand and salute our American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd ask you to please stand, continue standing, as we uh, have the CFO for the City of Brockton, Mr. Troy Claxon, sing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, see, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? At this time, uh, if we could have uh, Brockton Police Chaplain, uh, Pastor Beals, please come for the opening prayer. Let's pray. <clears throat> Our gracious God, as we come before you this morning, we thank you that you have given to us the protection that you have over so many years. And yet, Lord, we look back 22 years ago this day and recognize a tragedy that took place in our country unexpected, taking the loss of so many lives, not only on that day, but for many days forward. Father, we think about those lives that were lost. We think about the freedom that we have in this country. We think about the attacks that have been made on that freedom. And then we think also about the fact, Lord, that once again, you continue to give us protection and grace. I think, Father, of the many that lost their lives in, in, in respect to those that were first responders. We thank you for them and the work that they do. And God, as I think about each one of them working still today, those that uh, give of themselves, I ask that you would give to them your grace and blessing. Give them mercy, Lord, and strength as they do the work that helps the rest of us out. We desire safety. They provide it for us. We desire protection. They work for that. Many of them, Lord, are in precarious positions, potentially losing their own lives to save us. And we thank you for them and ask your grace to be on each one of them. Bless our first responders, Lord. Bless our city here of Brockton. And God bless the United States of America. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, we ask it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Beals. Uh, you, you could, could be seated if, you, if you'd like to. Uh, I'd like to first of all recognize and thank uh, Congressman Stephen Lynch for always supporting the city and always joining us on this memorial each and every year. So thank you, Congressman, for what you do. <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, Police Chief uh, Brenda Perez and Fire Chief Brian Nardelli, we have former Fire Chief uh, Ken Galligan, former Fire Chief Mike Williams is here as well, 
from our state delegation, we have Rep. Jerry Cassidy, Rep. Michelle Dubois, Rep. Rita Mendez, also Council at Large, Rita Mendez, and Senator Michael Brady. From our um, city, I want to thank uh, City Clerk Tim Cruz for being here today as well. Uh, city Councilor at Large, David Texera. City Councilor at Large, Moises Rodriguez. Councilor from Ward 7, Shirley Azak. Councilor from Ward 6, Mr. Jack Lally. Councilor from Ward 5, Attorney Jeff Thompson. I would also like to thank from the school committee, uh, Tim Sullivan from Ward 7, and from the county, uh, Mr. Greg Hanley, who is one of our Plymouth County Commissioners. I'd like to thank all of the city and school employees that are here today. I want to also thank the uh, billing department for, for setting this up. But more importantly, I want to just thank each and every one of you for being here today. Today is a solemn day. Those that were alive 22 years ago remember exactly what happened. It was a beautiful day when we woke up that morning. And then it turned very, very, very ugly very quickly with our nation being under attack. As you know, as the day unfolded, we lost 2,977 2 victims that day, almost 3,000 people, brave Americans that went to work for a normal day and they didn't go home to their loved ones. We also remember seeing on TV, because we were all glued to the TV that day, the heroes, the firefighters, the police officers in New York, and those that responded in Shanksville and Pennsylvania and the Pentagon. Uh, we remember the Port Authority, and I specifically, as a Catholic, remember Father Michael Judge praying on site, giving last rites on site, not knowing within minutes he, would, he himself would also be losing his life. If we think back to that horrible day, at 846, Flight 11 American Airlines crashed into the North Tower. And then, 16 minutes later, 903, the South Tower came under attack. United Airlines Flight 175 both Twin Towers came under attack. And then the third flight was American Airlines Flight 77 at 9.37 a.m. into the Pentagon. The Pentagon was partially uh, collapsed as a result of that traumatic flight. And then we know, because it's proven, that brave Americans that were on flight, United Airlines 93, fought back against those terrorists. They fought back. They revolted. They did what Americans do. And as a result of those actions, they gave their lives because at 10.03, Flight 93 clashed, crashed into the Stony Creek Township in Shanksville, Pennsylvania in a field. We also have the belief that that Flight 93 was heading to either the U.S. Capitol or to the White House. And those brave Americans sacrificed. On a personal note, I can tell you that I was down in New York City about a month and a half later running the New York Marathon and my sister and my brother were with me and we went down to Ground Zero and there were people still diligently working that day. There was smoke and, 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 and debris and, and dust. And there's many people here today from our fire and police that went there right after the attack. Those are brave Americans as well. But I can also tell you what's poignant in my mind is walking around New York City, the people of New York didn't give up. They came under attack, but but they're tough. New Yorkers are tough. Americans are tough. And I remember walking around Manhattan, getting ready for the marathon, and there were pictures of loved ones. Have you seen my father, Penn Station and Grand Central? Have you seen my mother? Have you seen my son? Have you seen my daughter? These were pictures. And, and I'll never forget that, nor my brother or my sister. But I can tell you what I, what I remember about that day personally is that we came under attack, but we acted as a nation. We acted as a nation as Americans. So today, we come together here in the city of champions within our great Commonwealth of Massachusetts because we will never forget. We will always remember and we will always, always, always remember what America means to each and every one of us. Those that live here, those that work here, those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. There are many people here today that work each and every day to better the city of Brockton that have also served our nation. So when we talk about 9-11 and we talk about the remembrance and the memorial, that's America. The greatest generation had a similar thing when Pearl Harbor came under attack. So I will tell you, as a kid that grew up in Brockton, I am thankful that I was born in the United States of America, but I'm also extremely thankful that we have leadership in Washington, D.C. And at this time, I'm going to ask our great friend, 
Congressman Stephen Lynch to come to the podium to share his thoughts. And then we will take a moment of silence exactly at 846 again to remember Flight 11. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for your leadership. I also want to thank the police color guard and the fire department color guard for your presence here this morning and for all of our first responders. Uh, we all have our, our own memories, personal memories. It's, it's, it's unbelievable, really, when, when you talk to someone about where they were on September 11, 2001. It's like the, the, the day is, is remembered minute by minute by everyone who experienced that, that terrible tragedy. For me, oddly enough, it was election day. I only represented, I was, I was only seeking to represent half of Brockton at the time. Later on, we were able to add the other half of Brockton to, into my district. But uh, it was a, it was such a painful day uh, and, and had such challenges. But I think internally, I try to remember the best parts of that day and the most noble parts of that day. I do remember when I, when I got to Washington, I was appointed to the Oversight Committee and the first order of business was to review the conduct of that day. What happened on that day? How did we, how did we expose ourselves to the vulnerability of what happened? And one of the, one of the assignments that we had was to collect all the, all the radio transmissions of that day and put it before the committee so that we could understand what actually happened in New York City in those towers on that day. And one of the amazing things that, that we were able to discover, and I'll, I will never forget this, is that we listened to the transmissions of the 400, 343 firefighters who went up the stairs at the North and South Towers. We listened to the transmissions of the 60 police officers and EMTs who also joined them. And unbelievably, we were able to track the transmissions to a point where there were a group of firefighters assisted by a couple of police officers and one EMT on the 82nd floor. So, so think about this. These men and women knew what they were going into. They, they knew that the tower had been struck. And with all that gear, with all that gear, they had saws, they had axes, they had stretches, they had equipment. They climbed up to the 82nd floor before that building collapsed when the transmissions ended. You think about the courage that that requires. Everything at stake. They did not hesitate. The important thing for us to remember today is that each and every firefighter, each and every police officer, each and every EMT today, standing here before us today, and their families has accepted that same challenge. They accept that same risk on our behalf. The best way to honor the men, men and women who perished on 9-11 is to honor their brothers and sisters who stand in uniform here today, who have that same responsibility, take on that same risk, who are supported by their families to put on that badge, to, to, to climb onto that fire engine in order to protect us in the city of Brockton each and every day. That's how we honor the memory of 9-11. And we, we teach others who may not have experienced that day. We have a lot of young people in our community here in Brockton who, who never understood what actually happened that day. And there's a way to make sure that that resonates with them in a way that, that, that I think our parents made sure when we grew up what happened at Pearl Harbor and other significant moments of challenge for this country throughout its history. One thing I want to 
echo in terms of what, what the mayor has said. One of the best parts of that whole challenge of September 11th was how this country came together in the days afterwards. Republicans and Democrats in Washington were never closer than on September 12th. And we've drifted away from that, that unity and seeing each other as Americans and brothers and sisters and working together for the betterment of our entire country. We've got to get back to that point. We are the strongest when we are united. Whatever challenge comes before us, whether it's terrorism, whether it's global challenges, whatever challenge comes before America, we can meet it best and meet it with the greatest firmness when we are united as a nation. No one can beat us. No one can beat us when we are united as Americans. I think we have a strong example of that here in Brockton throughout our history. That has been the character and the nature of the city of Brockton a city of fighters, a city of champions. I'm proud to be part of the Brockton delegation. And we work hand in hand, myself and my partner, Mayor Bob Sullivan, our state delegation, Senator Brady, Representative Mendez, Representative Jerry Cassidy, Representative Michelle Dubois, our city council. We are a team, we're a team. And we try to reflect that unity in the way we represent the people of Brockton in a way that is deserving of their history, but also the way this city has been and the people of this city have been as, as families. It's an honor for me to represent the city of Brockton in the United States Congress each and every day. I, I try hard, I strive to meet your highest expectations but it is an honor for me each and every day. May God bless our veterans and our gold star families, our blue star families, who have lost sons and daughters in protection of our public. And may God bless the city of Brockton and these United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Congressman Lynch. At this time, if we could uh, please uh, come together as a moment of silence uh, to remember uh, Flight 11 American Airlines crashing into the North Tower. Thank you. I also want to recognize Susan DeCastle, the City Council President, for joining us, and Tony Branch, who represents uh, is one of the Brockton representatives on behalf of the Southeastern Regional Vocational Technical High School. At this time, I'm going to ask our uh, Brockton Police Chief, uh, Brenda Perez, to please come to the podium. Good morning. Good morning. Today we gather as a community to remember and reflect upon a tragic event that shook our nation and world to the core. On this solemn occasion, we join together not only to mourn the lives lost on September 11, but to also honor the resilience, unity, and unwavering spirit that emerged in the aftermath of that tragedy. Images of September 11th are forever etched in our minds. And as we remember the lives that were lost, let us also pay tribute to the first responders and everyday heroes who rushed into danger with no hesitation. The bravery they displayed in the face of fear and uncertainty exemplifies the best of humanity. As public safety officers, we understand the sacrifices made by those who put, this, put service above self, and we honor their memory 
by continuing to uphold the values of justice and protection they embody. To our city, public, safety personnel, police, fire, EMS, thank you for your hard work, dedication, and selfless service to our residents. As we mark this solemn day of remembrance, let us also, let us honor the memory of those we lost, fostering a sense of unity in our community. May their memories inspire us to continue striving for a better world where peace and understanding prevail. We must remain vigilant and use our ability to protect and serve as an opportunity to foster an environment where everyone feels safe and valued. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Perez, for your years of service for the Brockton Police Department, your military service serving our nation and all the men and women that proudly pr protect and serve here in the city of Brockton for the Brockton Police Department. At this time, I would ask uh, our Fire Chief, Brian Nardelli, Nardelli, to please come to the podium. Chief. Good morning, everyone. As um, we reflect on a day that is so sorrowful in our nation's history, we have to reflect on the sadness, but also the great things that came out of September 11, 2001. As I left headquarters up by the high school today, I, I pulled out and I saw the high school kids going into um, starting their second week of school. And I thought to myself, most of these kids probably weren't even alive when this happened. But that's our charge. I can look over at some of our firefighters and some of our police officers that were very young and may not even remember what happened. But our charge is to make sure they remember. Remember the trepidation we felt in those days and weeks after as to what was gonna go on. Remember the fear, the anger, the anguish, the unsettled feelings we all had. But I think we need to celebrate the greatness. When we recognize and we reflect on that day, I think back to a story of Ladder Company 6 in, in the uh, lower part of Manhattan, Captain Jay Jonas. Regular morning, they were getting ready to go to work, checking their tools like every firefighter does. Be prepared for the day, be prepared for the shift, with anything that comes upon us. As the box stone came in and they headed off to the towers, they arrived in the lobby, debris falling over their heads. They reported to the command post. Captain Jonas walked up to Chief Pfeiffer, who was the battalion chief in charge at the command post, and was told, I need you to get to the 90th, 90th floor of the, of the North Tower. As they started to head over, get their tools, Captain Jonas always reflects on the fact that he heard the members of Rescue One behind him say, I don't know if we're going to get out of here today. They all shook hands and with steely resolve, they headed to the top of the tower. Ladder Company 6, Captain Jonas and his crew made it up to about the 27th floor when they heard a great rumble. And as that rumble came about, they didn't know what it was. That was the South Tower collapsing. They heard immediately from the command post for all firefighters to evacuate. As they began to evacuate, they were at the 27th floor when they heard this. They started to move their way down and got to about the 20th floor. And they found a 61-year-old woman by the name of Josephine Harris. Josephine worked in the uh, North Tower, about five stories above that. She had had trouble with her legs. She was having a hard time walking. But without the elevators in operation, she was gonna have to make it down the stairs to get out of this building. The members of Ladder Company, Ladder Company 6 immediately stopped, stayed with her as other people passed to try to shepherd her out of the building. As they made their way down, they made it to about the fourth floor when they felt some really uncomfortable feeling under their feet. And basically the stairway plummeted down into the rubble. As they were trapped along with a couple of other fire companies, they protected Josephine there were a couple of other collapses that went on, and the open up man, Charlie Dillon, one of the back step guys on Ladder Company 6, rolled over to protect Josephine Harris. They carried her partly, now they're buried in a heap of rubble. As they looked up, they saw a glimmer of hope. They saw some light flashing through as they saw this beautiful sky above them. They worked their way through, they got up out of that hollow that they were in, and probably after about a five hour trek, they were able to make it out back to where the command post was. 
That indelibly changed the members of the FDNY that day. They lost 343 firefighters, 60 police officers and Port Authority members. But when we do not remember the greatness of what went on that day and the un unity that came about, as the Congressman said, all over this country, if we always can put our differences aside and see what those people did that day and were able to accomplish after that, we will all live a more prosperous life. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief. Uh, we will be taking a moment of silence at, at 9.02, uh, again, to remember and reflect on United Airlines uh, Flight 175, which again did crash into the South Tower. Um, I would like to, uh, as mayor, I would like to truly thank everybody that works for the city of Brockton. The Congressman said, and, and all of us that were alive that day, remember that the brave men and women, they didn't hesitate. They didn't hesitate. They knew it was dire. They knew there was a good chance that they were gonna perish that day. But as true professionals, and I've said this before, the men and women that serve as police officers and firefighters, they have something in their fabric that not everybody has. And it's, it's a willingness to sacrifice themselves to save others. Same thing with our veterans, our people that protect our nation. It's a special, special characteristic that people have. So when we look at the men and women that, that serve the Brockton Police and the Brockton Fire, EMS, they all have that. They all have that. It's a God-given feeling and characteristic and they do it because they know they're trying to make society better. So when we looked at the video of that day and we saw the look of distraught on their face. We didn't see anybody walking the other way. They were charging ahead, forging ahead. And that's what we do as Americans. We forge ahead. Good times and bad times. And that's what we will always do here in the United States of America. That's why we're the best nation in the entire world. And so right now, I would humbly ask all of us to please take a moment of silence as we pause, remember, and honor Flight 175 of United Airlines, which again crashed because of the terrorist actions into the South Tower on that day 22 years ago. Thank you. At this time, I would ask uh, Brockton Fire Chaplain to please come up to the podium and we will have a, a closing prayer and then we will have some last final closing remarks and then the Brockton firefighters will, will close us out with a selection. Reverend McCoy. In the Gospel of John, Rabbi Jesus speaks of peace. He says, Peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. He said, not as the world gives do I give. Therefore, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Amen. Thank you again, Reverend McCoy.
Ladies and gentlemen, before we conclude, I would ask Chief Nardelli, Chief Perez, Congressman Lynch to join me as we proudly lay a wreath at the base of the American flagpole over to the right. Details, attain. Ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you for joining us here at City Hall, the People's Building. God bless each and every one of you. God bless our city of champions, our commonwealth, and of course, our great nation, United States of America. Thank you and have a great day.